ahead to you. Good morning, everyone. Stephen Laskowski. I am uh, president and CEO of the Ontario Trucking Association, and I'll have the honor of introducing Premier Ford in just a moment. Uh, I just want to provide a little bit of an overview and a perspective of what today's announcement means for the trucking ex industry, but really by extension the Ontario economy for today and moving forward. Uh, the Ontario Trucking knows that the Government of Ontario understands the importance of infrastructure investment as a key component of economic growth. Investment in highways, roads and bridges helps improve road safety, commuting times, supports job creation and ultimately helps the economy grow by providing better access for customers of the trucking industry to both domestic and international markets. Today's announcement of the province's commitment to building Highway 413 is yet another example of the government's commitment to ensuring our province remains the economic heartbeat of our nation. Why is the construction of Highway 413 important to our future? Highway 413 will fill infrastructure gaps in Ontario's roadway links to the benefit of the province's transportation and logistics hubs in the northwestern GTA. The highway will also provide congestion relief for local and municipal roadways and add redundancy to the GTA's 400 series network, significantly improving transit times for goods movement by truck and access to central and northern Ontario. It is also expected that the highway will strengthen the connection for Canada's busiest truck rail intermodal facilities. It is clear to the Ontario Trucking Association that Highway 14, 413 is not only a fundamental piece of infrastructure, but also a key part of Ontario's economic future success. Ontario OTA applauds the province of Ontario's commitment to building Highway 413, a highway that will secure Ontario's place in the North American supply chain as the top investment location for today and into tomorrow. I'd now like to welcome to the podium the Premier of Ontario, Doug Ford. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone, and, and thank you so much, uh, Stephen, for the introduction. And it's great to be here in Calden with my good pal, Mayor Alan Thompson, and Joe Mancinelli from Leuna. I want to thank both of them. We're joined by members of our team, Minister Mel Rooney, Beth and Falvey, Jones, Tobolo, Tangri, Rashid, and, and Gill, as well as MPP Sandu, Anand, Kusandova, Sabawe, and Cazetto. Our government has a plan for growing a stronger economy, an economy that works for everyone. It's a plan that will protect our progress in our fight against COVID-19, but also looks beyond to the Ontario we want to build, to the future we want for our kids and grandkids. It's a plan that will attract investment, restore and create good jobs in our steel, auto and manufacturing industries. It's a plan that will unleash the economic potential of our North as we build up homegrown supply chains for electric vehicles and battery manufacturing right here in Ontario. Attracting more investment, restoring good manufacturing jobs and unleashing our economic potential, none of that is possible without the skilled workers. That's why our government is expanding job training. It's why we're encouraging more young people to enter the skilled trades, while breaking down the barriers that have stopped hardworking newcomers from finding good jobs because of unfair requirements for in-province ex experience. To attract and keep these workers, we're also investing in Ontario's communities with better health care and stronger local infrastructure. That means saying yes to modern hospitals, more ICU capacity, and building long-term care home beds as we add thousands more nurses and personal support workers. It also is saying yes to building roads and highways to meet the needs of a growing province. And it means saying yes to connecting communities with more public transit. Friends, it's all linked. Ontario's economy is like a machine. If one part of that machine isn't working to its full potential, it holds us all back. But when Ontario is firing on all cylinders, well, world, watch out. There's no other place anyone would rather start a business, work, or raise a family. That's why our government is continuing to build Ontario and will be delivering the much needed 413 highway. Right now, our 400 series highways are clogged with gridlock. 
Ask anyone who drives on them and you'll hear the same thing. They're not suitable for the current needs of Ontarians, let alone to handle the influx of new residents who are expected to arrive in Ontario over the next five years. Folks, these are staggering numbers. Over one million more people are projected to come to the Golden Horseshoe over the next five years and two million over the next 10. While we welcome those who will contribute to Ontario's future success, I want you to imagine what that would mean if the current infrastructure was left in place. It would be an absolute nightmare for commuters, for residents and for families. Real action needs to be taken to fix what's broken. And the fact of the matter is, this should have been addressed many, many years ago. But previous governments chose to say no. They said no to commuters and to families by refusing to see the necessity of suitable highway infrastructure. They said no because they cared more about ideology than about real people. And they said no to hardworking people who just want to get home quickly after long days of work. And they also said no, and they left you to suffer the consequences. Well, that ends now, because this is a government that fixes problems, problems that others didn't care enough to fix. Right now, over 300,000 commuters in York, Peel, and in Halton regions experience gridlock every single day. Precious time wasted just sitting in traffic. It just never should be like this. Building Highway 413, a transit and highway corridor across the regions, will save commuters up to 30 minutes one way, 60 minutes, two ways. That is 30 minutes not stuck in traffic or 60 minutes going both ways, not waiting to get back home to the family. So building Highway 413 makes sense for people's lives. No question about that. But getting drivers around more quickly makes economic sense as well because we know that not only will the new fourth, uh, Highway 413 help get people where they are going much faster, it will also help to get goods to market faster, as Steve was mentioning earlier on. The transportation system is the absolute backbone of our export-driven economy. It's 40% of the jobs in the entire sector, and the current infrastructure that you're dealing with is totally inadequate for our mission to build a better Ontario for everyone. The construction of Highway 413 would also create 3,500 jobs and pump $350 million into the economy. This is a win for commuters, it's a win for workers, and it's a win for Ontario. My friends, our government is committing over $145 billion into infrastructure projects. That's why we also just announced plans for the Bradford Bypass, a new four-lane freeway connecting Highway 400 in Simcoe County and Highway 404 in York Region. We're going to get com communities moving again. We're going to get goods moving, and we're going to get this province moving again. Our province has come so far, and we can't afford to go back to the politics of no. Instead, our government is saying yes. Yes to building, yes to investing, and yes to growing. Let's say yes to the better and brighter future that the people of Ontario deserve. Thank you, and God bless the people of Ontario. Now I'll hand it over to Minister Mel Rooney. Good morning, everyone. Bonjour à tous. It's great to be back in Caledon. Inescapable gridlock comes at a cost. It robs people of their time. It adds to the cost of goods, making life less affordable for Ontarians. And it wreaks havoc on the environment. We need to get building. Highway 413 will better connect Halton, Peel and York regions. And it will make the difference between calling home to say you're stuck in traffic and sitting down to have dinner with your family. As we move forward, we will plan and build responsibly. Next month, we'll be hosting the third Public Information Centre to gather further feedback from the public on the project. Right now in Ontario, there is only one party that is ready to build. It's our PC government, led by Premier Ford, that is stepping up to the plate. Thank you. Je vous remercie. I'd now like to invite the, to the podium the Minister of Finance, Peter Bethenfalvy. Well, good day, everyone, and colleagues, and uh, Premier, and uh, Mayor, and Joe, and Sylvia, and Steve, and Caroline, of course. Thank you, Minister Mulroney. It's a sincere pleasure to be with you all here today. 
Last week, I released our government's 2021 fall economic statement, our plan to build Ontario. Our government's plan for this province is an ambitious one. It's a plan that will see Ontario leading not only Canada in economic growth, but North America as well. That kind of ambitious growth target requires a strong foundation of highways, hospitals, housing, and high-speed internet. Tomorrow's prosperity depends on getting shovels in the ground today. La prospérité de demain repose sur les chantiers qui sont lancés aujourd'hui. That's why our plan allocates $2.6 billion to expand and repair more than 580 provincial highways and bridges. In Highway 413, it is an important part of this plan. It will be a key economic driver, expected to support up to 3,500 jobs each year, and as the Premier mentioned, generate up to $350 million in annual real GDP for the province. Investing in assets like Highway 413 will improve Ontario's economic productivity for the long term. It's an important part of our government's prudent and responsible plan, a plan to protect the progress we have made, a plan to build for the future. And with that, I will say thank you and pass things along to Mayor Thompson, Mayor of Caledon. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, Premier, Ministers, everyone, welcome to Caledon. As the Mayor of the Town of Caledon, I want to highlight the importance of planning and building infrastructure that will service and support significant future growth in the Greater Golden Horseshoe area. In Caledon alone, we will grow over 300,000 people by 2051 and 125,000 jobs. The GTS corridor and will enhance transit connections like the future of the Caledon Vaughan Go Line <coughs> will help move people and goods across the Greater Golden Horseshoe area. That will take the pressure of our local roads and our infrastructure. I, I, I also like to thank the opportunity of the province to look at green innovation in design and construction of the corridor. For example, utilizing embodied carbon materials, ensuring the corridor has a transit feature and none other carbon emitting vehicle infrastructure. We know that the corridor is needed to service the growth and I think we can look at ways it can also be innovative. I want to thank Premier Ford and Minister Mulroney for inviting me here today. I look forward to continuing to work with our provincial partners as we move forward in building Ontario a better Ontario. I will now welcome to the podium from Leona Joseph Mancinelli. Thank you, Mayor Thompson. Premier, ministers, uh, ladies and gentlemen, what a pleasure uh, to be here once again uh, for another great announcement on improving the infrastructure of our great province of Ontario. For several years, uh, we have heard of the increase in the infrastructure deficit in Canada. Now in excess of $200 billion right across the country, it is refreshing to see a level of leadership here in Ontario that has tackled this infrastructure deficit in the last few years and has eradicated a number of, of the deficits across the country. Many announcements on transportation infrastructure from subways to LRTs to a number of new roads, new highways that are being built. These are not only great work projects for construction workers like the workers that I represent, but they are great economic development projects that will help communities, smaller communities here north of Toronto, like the announcement that's made here today uh, about the uh, construction of the 413. This will bring prosperity to a number of communities north of Toronto, will create thousands of jobs for workers, not only for construction workers, but, but many others. The domino effects uh, of the economic impact that a road like this has is profound. In fact, those construction workers that are going to be building this road are going to be buying cars, are going to be buying dishwashers, television sets, houses, etc., because of the prosperity uh, that was brought to them by the infrastructure program that our provincial government has unfolded. 
So I want to thank Premier Ford, Minister Mulroney, all of the cabinet ministers that are here today, and many others for showing such strong leadership and tenacity uh, in order to eradicate the infrastructure deficit we have in our country and in our great province, Ontario. Thank you so much. Okay, we're ready to take questions. For journalists here that have a question, if you could just line up behind the microphone. And a reminder, it's one question and one follow-up. How are you doing? Good morning. My name is Paul Webster. Hi, Paul. I'm a freelancer here on assignment for the Toronto Star. The question I had, uh, Premier Ford, is actually for your colleague, Catherine Mulroney. Do you think I could ask her a question directly at this yeah. point? Caroline Mulroney. Uh, sorry, yeah. Caroline. Right. Forgive me. Thank you. Hi, good morning, Caroline. Sorry about that. Catherine, there's, I, it's a terrible mistake. Um, I, yesterday I emailed your office and asked for an interview with you and you, uh, your staff declined that request. So when I heard on the radio this morning you'd be here, I thought I'd come out here and ask you. I, as you may know, on March 18th I did a series of Freedom of Information requests uh, relating to the Highway 413, uh, proposed Highway 413. Um, with your ministry and about a week ago, two weeks ago, I got a, re a, a response that informed me that on March the 19th, or sorry, April the 19th of this year, um, you took a rather important decision um, that relates to the Highway 407. Now, the Highway 407, as we know, is a private toll road and many people argue that the Highway 413 would not be needed if the tolls were reduced or dropped on high, Highway 407, which was privatized actually by the previous Conservative government, as you know. Um, during the pandemic, uh, the Highway 407 owners, which include Majority Ownership Canada Pension Plan, approached your ministry and requested financial relief, which certainly took a few people by surprise considering that they've been kind of extracting tolls from Ontario commuters uh, with, with enormous profitability for a very long time and then suddenly they turned it around on you folks and asked you for relief. Now my question is, you had the opportunity to ask the Highway 407 owners uh, to drop the tolls and they refused or didn't during the pandemic and then you forgave them upwards of, well upwards of, a billion dollars in penalties because they did not meet their contractual obligations. In other words, you let them off the hook both ways. You didn't push them to reduce the tolls during the pandemic, and then you forgave them well over a billion dollars that they owed the public under their contract. Why did you do those two things on, March 19, on April 19th of this year? Well, first of all, Paul, I'm glad that you were able to join us out here. I hope the traffic wasn't too bad. It was perfect. Here. Okay, well, I'm glad that you could be here today. Look, uh, since the beginning of the pandemic, our government has been focused on making life more affordable for Ontarians as we're going through these challenging times. Uh, the 407, as you mentioned, is a private company and they make their decisions. But what we have done is we've tried to find ways to make life more affordable by uh, freezing tolls, uh, by uh, reducing uh, the costs of our vehicle and commercial products. Uh, and so we're going to continue to look for ways to make life more affordable for Ontarians and make life easier, which is why we're here today, because we're building this highway. Can I do a follow-up or did I already give take too much time? One quick follow-up. You really did have the opportunity to push them hard to reduce the tolls. Why specifically didn't you do that? Well, look, they're a private company. Uh, we have uh, we froze tolls on our Ontario, on our provincial highways. We have announced that the Bradford bypass will not be tolled, and it's our intention to not toll the 413. We're very focused on making life more affordable, uh, and we're going to continue to find ways to do that. My question is for the Premier. Uh, but the minister can chime in if, if she likes. Uh, uh, yeah. Mr. Premier, I haven't heard you address this specific point, but uh, Highway 413 will involve paving the green belt. I think it's 400 acres, some parts, a, a, a small part of it. You have previously promised a number of times that you would not touch the green belt at all. Can you address th that, that, uh, that change, please? Well, what I did say is uh, we weren't going to touch the green belt for, for developers. 
which we've kept that promise. This is a critical infrastructure project that's going to get people home 30 minutes one way, an hour two ways. It's going to make sure that we, we get goods to market a lot quicker. It's an absolute critical highway that we need to build for the influx of uh, immigration that we're going to see and you know, welcome immigration uh, over the next five years. We're going to see a million more people. Uh, the, these people, uh, right now, actually, the 400 series are clogged with gridlock. You see it every 400 series. You're sitting there in traffic, and this is going to alleviate the, the problems to a certain degree, and so is the Bradford Bypass. So we're going to move forward on this with consultation of the community, with consultation with the, the local mayors and the Trucking Association and, and other stakeholders. And what we've heard is we're in desperate need of this highway, and we're going to build it, and we're going to make sure we get people from point A to point B in a much faster, uh, faster fashion. And as a follow-up, I want to ask you about a comment that you and some of your other ministers have made repeatedly uh, in this new highway push which is to dismiss critics of the highways as uh, ideological activists. Yep. But you know that there are people who live uh, along the route of this highway in the municipalities through which it will go. Uh, those municipalities, many of them have actually either uh, stayed neutral or have, have actually voted to oppose the highway. So they're not downtown ideological activists, are they, in Halton Hills and Vaughan? Where, uh, how do you respond to that? No, the vast majority of the people in these regions and they're sitting on the highway uh, for an additional hour, they want to get home a lot quicker. Unfortunately, people up in this area don't have the bicycles that people downtown have that they can hop on a bike and, and drive from point A to point B but the a lot quicker. Councils, though, they, they know that they're people, don't they? Why would they? Why would they oppose it if the people, the local councils? Up here Again, you're you're talking a very small percent, very small percentage. We live in a democracy. The majority of the people want this highway. We're building the highway, and you, you can't you can't be. Uh, you're talking about ideology. You can't sit there like the previous government did. For 15 years, the NDP and the Liberals stood by while people were stuck in traffic. We want to make sure that we take care of the, the people and get them home a lot quicker, to get goods to the market a lot quicker, and just sitting there and, and telling people, hop on your bicycle or, or get, on, get behind a horse and buggy and start uh, driving, it doesn't cut it. That's the ideology of a lot of people that are from downtown Toronto making their comments about up here in Calden. I can assure you the people of Calden, don't worry about the people that live downtown making their ideolo ideological uh, comments about building a highway that they're never going to use. It's, it's very simple. We're going to build this highway, we're going to get the province going, we're going to build infrastructure when it comes to highways, roads, bridges, hospitals and, uh, and schools. We're going to get this province going. We've spent about we're going to be spending 145 billion dollars on making sure that we put infrastructure in place. Simple as that. Hey, good morning, Premier. Hey, uh, sticking to your theme of saying yes to everything these yeah. days, um, one thing that your government did not say yes to in the fall economic statement, which was tabled last week, was cutting the gas tax by five cents a liter. Just a few days yeah. before, you said you were going to do it. Can you explain to the to drivers in Ontario why your government chose not to cut the five yeah. cents off of the gas tax? Well, I appreciate your favorite question there, Colin. We're going to commit to uh, making sure that we cut 5.7 cents off before the next budget. We're the only government that's going to be reducing gasoline by 10 cents a litre. And my call for the federal government is match the 10 cents. It's simple as that. People are hurting right now. We're the only government stepping up to put 10 cents per litre back into people's pockets. And I'm asking the federal government to partner with us. Put 10 cents back into people's pockets as well. That's 20 cents. It, that's a massive amount. Folks, I've said it over and over again. You can spend money a lot wiser than the municipal, provincial, and federal governments. And, you know, that's why I'm asking again, the federal government, put the 10 cents, match us. We'll match you dollar for dollar. If you want to do more, we'll match you. Because it's all about uh, taking care of the people, putting money back in their pocket. And the worst place you could ever give money to is the government. So you're, you're eliminating all taxes? <laughs> I'm just... You know something, Colin, if I could do it, believe me, I would. <laughs> uh, 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 Premier, on another note, yeah. uh, also to do with the federal government, child care. Um, yeah. There are some municipalities that are now talking about uh, bypassing uh, the provincial government and potentially coming up with a deal with the federal government. I'm wondering if you think that that's a wise strategy, if, if you think that it should be left to the provincial government, and if you can give us an update on, on where those negotiations are. Well, you know, we've been working with the federal 
federal government, uh, and I've said over and over again, the feds know it, we want a deal, but I'm not going to make a bad deal that's costing taxpayers billions and billions of additional dollars just to make the deal. I'm asking, I'm asking, I'm pleading with the municipalities, don't divide and, and, and try to conquer. It just doesn't work. Let's stay united as a province. When you stay strong and you stay united, we're going to get a much uh, better deal. I'm not in favor of making side deals with the federal government, with the municipality. That's just not right for the people of Ontario. You need to stand together. We need to stay united. And we're going to get a much better deal than, than if you went it alone. It just makes common sense. Premier for Morgan uh, Campbell here from Global News. My question is on the push to tap into the ring of fire. What is your timeline to begin mining and building in those regions? Yeah, that's really, really exciting. This goes back to our message about building batteries. You know, we're, we now have five of the big auto manufacturers. They're going full steam. And on one of the calls, they, they, I think the CEO said, I've mentioned batteries 15 times. Well, the good news is now we're going to be uh, building uh, batteries right here in Ontario. We have the, the natural minerals, we have the graphite, we have the lithium, we have the nickel, we have the cobalt. Uh, what better place than, than build batteries right here? And that goes back to the ring of fire. Uh, we want to get up there as soon as possible. That's where all the minerals are as well. And uh, the, these auto, automotive companies are really excited knowing they have a one-stop shop. You build the batteries, you build the cars here, and it's unlike anywhere in North America that has this proposition. So I'm confident they're going to come and we're going to get that uh, road built as quickly as possible up to the ring of fire. Great. Thank you, Premier. Thank My you. next question is for Minister Mulrooney. Yep. Minister, I just want to touch on the price tag of the 413 and the Bradford bypass. We, ha we aren't quite clear exactly how much this is going to cost per, per project. And, you know, there are a lot of concerns that taxpayers don't know this. So how come that hasn't been made clear? Well, we've talked about the costs of the Bradford bypass and the 413 uh, in the past. As you know, we're moving forward with the procurement process. And in order to guarantee the best price for Ontario taxpayers, we want that procurement to be as competitive as possible. Um, and so we're going to leave it to the market to determine what that cost is going to be. But we want a competitive procurement process to guarantee the best price. Uh, but what we are doing is we are building. We're investing uh, in public transit and we're investing in, in highways and roads and bridges. Uh, and we're going to do what it takes to, uh, to build for, uh, for the future. Hey, Premier. How are you doing? Good. Good. Um, follow up the question with the electric vehicles. Uh, yeah. You cancelled the rebate. Will you bring it back? And if not, well, what is the government going to do to put, get people to buy electric vehicles? Well, first of all, no, we aren't bringing it back. I'm not going to give rebates to the buy guys that are buying 100 and some odd thousand dollar cars, millionaires. So, but in saying that, we're going to create thousands and thousands of jobs uh, building electric vehicles. Matter of fact, every single plant that is uh, manufacturing cars now is going to uh, transition over to electric uh, battery operated cars. Not only are we going to create thousands of jobs and secure thousands of jobs for uh, many decades to come, we're also going to create thousands of jobs manufacturing batteries. And uh, when you go to the, the dealership, uh, over time, it's not going to happen overnight, but over time, you're going to have a choice. Either buy electric vehicle or you buy electric vehicle. They're, you know, and that, that's, that's what the choice is going to be. Uh, you've talked a lot about adding more supply to housing market, but since you've taken office, home prices in the province have just kept skyrocketing. What else are you going to do to make it easier for people to afford to buy a home? Well, what we have to do is work with the municipalities, and the, and the log jam is at municipalities. When it takes four years to, to get a permit, we're going to sit down with the municipalities and see how the province can help them. Give them the tools that they need to speed it up. But most importantly, we need to measure the municipalities, work with them hand in hand, and ask them what they need from the province. But some of the nightmare stories you hear about building homes that will take four to even up to seven years to build, and uh, that, that's ridiculous. By that time, the cost has gone up, the market's gone up, the material's gone up, the labor's gone up. Uh, we need to work with the municipalities and uh, we're going to do that. We're going to sit down with uh, the leadership and all municipalities and come up with creative ideas. How we can move forward on getting houses built a lot quicker than uh, that we've seen over the last uh, little while there. But we're going to go full steam ahead.
Hi, Premier. Hi. Holly McKenzie Suter with Hi, Canadian Holly. Press. Hi. Asking you about um, hospital worker mandatory vaccinations. You decided last week not to do that, no. but uh, the evidence that you put in your statement was from other provinces, nothing local from Ontario besides a figure, estimated figure of job losses that the health minister said isn't up to date. So just wanted to ask you today if you have any more Ontario specific as evidence to explain why you won't mandate vaccines for hospital workers and why you won't tell us how many hospitals were against yeah. that. Well, let's, let's be very clear about mandating, uh, uh, you know, the hospitals. Uh, we gave them the flexibility to put their own mandate in. A lot of hospitals cannot handle the capacity coming in, be it the rural hospitals for the most part. And I, by the way, I think the world of all the CEOs have done an incredible job. It doesn't matter if it's downtown Toronto or Ottawa or up in the rural areas, but it might be easier to fill positions in downtown Toronto than it is up in Timmins or Sudbury or any rural hospital. And when, you know, when people are, are lining up for backlog surgeries, we can't afford to lose 50 uh, nurses in a hospital or 20 nurses or 100 nurses, whatever it might be. And that's going to be up to the hospital to decide. Uh, but we want to make sure that they can keep up with the capacity of the backlog uh, surgeries, the cancer screenings, cancer surgeries. And that's going to be up to the, the hospitals to make sure they, they fill those positions. I didn't hear exactly how many hospitals said they were against it, but I do have another question yeah. about the uh, breed-specific dog legislation. Sure. Um, I just wanted to ask why you've been relaxing the rules around pit bulls and planning to change that legislation and whether the recent attack by Flu, that dog in Vaughan that got mm -hmm. a lot of attention, is that giving you any pause about relaxing the rules? Well, first of all, I, I, my thoughts are with the, the, the young boy that got bitten in their family and uh, nothing is going to change right at this point, but our, our thoughts are with the, the family. That's the most important thing. This is our last question. Jamie? Good morning, Mr. Premier. Hi. Mr. Premier, we've uh, done several stories on the vaccine passports, how easy they're to the, the copy, how easy they're, they're to counterfeit, how long uh, the abuse of that program. Basically, they all boil down to the first passport, which was very easy uh, 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 to duplicate whether you had an Adobe program or a Word sure. program. Um, are you concerned that people are now getting into sporting events that haven't been double vaxxed using fake passports or fake vaccine certificates? Yeah, Jamie, good good question. I guess with anything now in the technology, you know, you, you, you can duplicate or fraudulently uh, print anything you want. And we're really relying on the business owners to, to check the, the QR codes. And, you know, the people that put together the QR codes and our minister and our uh, within the ministry did an incredible job in a very short period and so far I, I believe the vast majority with any system Jamie if someone wants to find uh, loopholes or break the law they, they're going to find it but I think the vast majority of the people are following the protocols and I, I want to thank them for that. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Thank you.